All right, good evening. Let's let's um, get the, the show on the road. Uh, I'm Darren Palmer from the Tasman District Council Communications team and welcome to our webinar tonight to explain the ins and outs of our stock control and driving bylaw. Uh, tonight's presenter will be Dwayne Fletcher. Uh, he's the main man in the seat. You'll be able to fire questions at him through the Q&A uh, function on the bottom of your screen. So what we'll do is we'll accumulate the uh, questions and answers and we'll throw them at him uh, when there's a gap in proceedings or maybe at the end, we'll just see how we go tonight. But um, welcome on board. And I will throw it over to you, Dwayne, to, um, to get the show on the road. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks very much. Uh, kia ora, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Dwayne Fletcher. I'm the Strategic Policy Manager at Tasman District Council. Um, and I'll um, be the main presenter walking you through this presentation tonight. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take an hour. It should be be 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, um, leaving plenty of time for questions and discussion. Um, but I think I'd mention a couple of other people who are joining me um, from the operations team in particular. So Jamie McPherson um, is also here tonight from the, he's the transportation manager at Tasman District Council and Andrew McAllister as well. So Andrew will be um, uh, the person you get in touch with in relation to um, stock control and driving bylaw in the future if you need to register or you've got any questions or anything like that. So they'd be both here tonight too to, to help out. Um, so I'll launch into it. Um, in terms of questions, look, I think I'll just run through the presentation and there's a QA and a feature in the webinar. So um, look, just log up your questions there and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. Cool. So <clears throat> the things we're going to cover tonight are um, why do we even have a bylaw? Um, we'll talk about the kind of responsibilities you have when, cross, um, when managing a crossing or when driving stock along the road. And one of the key things we want you to remember tonight are um, the suite of safety measures that we want you to think about and you can pick from. It's largely a pick and mix for most, most instances um, that you can, can use and to comply with safety requirements in the bylaw. And we'll, we'll get to the questions. So in terms of the bylaw, why have one anyway? Um, and, and I'm pretty sure that most of you will understand that it's to provide for the safe and orderly driving and moving of stock across um, all of our roads. Uh, roads are, can be a hazardous place um, for people who, and as you probably already aware, for those who um, cross stock or drove them, um, it can be a hazardous place for you, for the people around you, um, the general traffic using the road, and for your stock. Um, so this helps provide some basic um, rules and obligations on you, and they are largely basic, to help keep you and others around you safe. Um, it also is there to make sure that um, that your operations don't affect the road environment too much, and in particular that effluent and, and mud um, don't wreck the road, um, and as much as possible avoid them going into waterways, just to look after the health of our waterways. So that's why we have a bylaw. Um, there are some kind of general responsibilities that apply in the bylaw regardless of what you're doing. Um, if you've got stock on the road, these apply um, in these cases. Um, the first is don't allow stock on road to tether or graze. So for the most part, there's a presumption that you're moving stock um, along the road. You're not using the road or the road margin um, to hold or to graze or anything like that. There is some provisions in the bylaw for using road, um, the road margin as a race or even for grazing, but you need a permit for that. And it's a bit detailed and we don't actually have that much of that activity in Tasman. So we're not going to cover it tonight. But if, you're in, if that is something that interests you, go look in the bylaw. Um, don't move stock across the road or during um, during the hours of darkness. Darkness, um, but there are some exceptions. Um, if you've got stock that's escaped, um, there's an emergency for whatever reason. You need to move stock quickly because there's a, 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 um, a paddock is flooding or whatever. Um, and in certain instances, you can register um, to use a crossing at night for milking purposes. So generally, if it's dark, don't take your stock out there unless you're registered primarily or it's some kind of emergency or unexpected situation. Um, and, and hours of darkness means um, half an hour after basically sunset and half an hour before sunrise uh, or some other time when it's really, really dark. But those are the, that's the general rule of thumb for thinking about what hours of darkness mean. Um, there are some limitations on um, the maximum head of stock you can, you can drive. Um, and just so you know, they are... Uh, 600 head of cattle, 3,000 head of sheep, or 1,000 head of, of other stock, such as deer. Um, so those are the, um, if you exceed those, you need to come and talk to council, um, or you're, you're thinking you might exceed those, come and talk to council. And that's in an any one move, not, um, for example, if you, um, you've you got 
um, stop crossing a road here like that um, and there's 555 and you do it twice a day that's fine you know we're only concerned about that so it's kind of um, those movements <clears throat> all at once um, there's a general duty um, for you to exercise care towards other road users so whatever rules are in this bylaw that's great but your overarching duty is um, of one of care to your fellow motorists and road users so that's something we want you to bear in mind at all times and I'm, and I'm sure many of you already do um, <clears throat> we do have some specific safety measures that I mentioned before that we want you to use um, and we'll get to those in, in a minute um, and, and you, generally they conform with practice that you guys already have very often so they shouldn't be particularly onerous to, to implement if you haven't already um, and the other thing is um, particularly when you're driving um, make sure you don't damage other people's property or, or public property um, such as gates, fences, um, letterboxes um stuff like that um <clears throat> if you are registering um a stock um or a drove or a crossing um there are well, sorry there are some instances where you do need to register i just want to say up front it's free it's a low hassle process and we're doing it primarily to make sure that council or the road controlling authority if that's not council understands what's going on and so that we can um, also use our communication channels to let other people know um, what's going on in and around their neighborhood so you got to register if um, you're uh, driving uh, or, or on this likely crossing um, in an urban or residential area okay so we want you to let us know five days ahead of something like that happening um, urban areas are basically your townships you know Tafawera, Murchison, uh, Brightwater, Wakefield, uh, Tasman, Mapua, all those sorts of things um, up the Mutri, all that sort of stuff so you know um, if, you, if you're moving stock um, through those areas, let us know five days ahead. We'll use our communication channels to give people as much of a heads up as possible. Um, if you're along or, or across a state highway, um, you're going to need to register. Um, and that's so that, again, we can use our communication channels to as much as possible and NZTA's communication channels to let people know what's going on. And in this case, we also need to let Wakakatahi or the state highway network operator know what's going on as well. If you're driving more than five kilometers, that's um, where things get quite, can take quite a long time and can be quite disruptive. So again, we wanna know when you're um, driving uh, for any distance that's greater than that. And also um, generally there's a prohibition, as I mentioned before, about uh, moving or um, crossing in, in hours of darkness, but we do know that you know, you've got to do that um, uh, milking in the dark sometimes. So what we ask is that you register those crossings um, so that we can be aware of it. It's also so, um, uh, at least in one instance, we can we can we have at least a small register of um, crossings, and we can check on the road condition from time to time to make sure it's not deteriorating with that activity. Um, and the only thing we need to mention here is again, it's free. Just we just ask you to to register. But um, for things like a crossing, um, it's it's not we're not asking you to um, register. Um, if you have two or three crossings on a property, we just want you to register those once. Um, and our assumption is until something changes that, um, you know, that registration will operate in perpetuity effectively. We just need to know. We don't expect you to, you know, re-register every milking season or anything like that. It's just once and if something changes. Um, right, those safety measures I mentioned before. Um, so generally speaking, there are some specific conditions where you got to use um, a particular ones of these or sometimes more than two but in general if you're driving a crossing we ask that you use two of these measures um, as a minimum and they are two um, or, and I will go into detail on these by the way so you'll see what I mean two orange cones not less than 900 millimeters apart on each side of the crossing not less than 30 meters apart high vis vests um, signage indicating stock on the back of or front of a pilot vehicle with flashing amber lights or hazard lights on um, Vehicles with flashing amber lights, with headlights and hazard lights on, um, the Waka Kutahi approved static signs um, placed 150 metres from the crossing point, if it's a crossing, um, personnel wearing, um, holding, sorry, high-vis flags to alert traffic, and there's one there, G, for crossings only, which is kind of recognising that there's a there might be a good cost-effective solution, it's permanent, which is amber lights, either side of the road, that can be seen from both approaches, um, and it's visible to all traffic. And you'll see what we mean by some of these. Dwayne, can so I just leave that and just a couple of quick questions? I think we should answer them while we... While we oh, okay. 
Yeah, if just sorry, I'll give you a brief oh, glass, of, glass of water. Um, Eleanor was, is wondering, she thought property owners were, it was their job to fence stock out. So as a drover, uh, you'd expect to shut the gates, but it's very hard to find gates if there's no fence. Uh, how does that sit? Oh, sorry. My, my concern primarily was around respecting other people's property. Um, so if there is no um, gate on the race or, or anything like that, that's, um, yeah, you just have to manage as best you can. Yeah. Um, my concern was about damage to other people's property primarily. Yes, sweet. Hey, quick one from Nigel. So um, I, I cross weekly across State Highway 60 up Takika. Do I need to register every time? I guess not. If that's yours, Dwayne. You don't have to register every time, do you? No, in fact, we just want you to register once unless something changes, um, Nigel. So if you could just get in contact with um, Andrew, um, register the particulars of your crossing, um, and that's all we need to know unless circumstances change. Sweet. Thanks, mate. You can rock into it again. Sorry. Cool. Um, so that expression there, two orange cones, not less than 30, <laughs> not less than 900 metres high on each side of the road. Look, this is what it means. I know that's kind of a wordy expression, but basically... Um, you know, if you chuck a couple of cones on either side of the road, make sure they're 30 metres apart. This is obviously for a crossing more than anything. Um, that's one of the safety measures that we can we can ask you to do and that you can use. Um, and I should say that you don't have to ask our, ask our permission for which safety measures to use. The, all those that are there um, are pretty much available to you. And you just pick the ones that are appropriate and suitable for you. Um, the other one's pretty obvious, and that's personnel wearing high-vis vest, high-vis gear. Um, and I imagine uh, many of your staff already do that anyway. So there's one ticked. Um, if you're, um, um, particularly if you're driving, but it could be for either driving or stock crossings, basically, you know, a, a pilot vehicle with flashing amber lights um, with headlights and hazard lights on and preferably a sign um, that's explaining what's, you know, what the hazard people are, um, um, what, what the hazard people are approaching is. In this case, um, we just slapped on a stock sign there on a stock sign onto the onto the car, and um, and whatever works that's visible to the oncoming public is it works for us too. Um, some of the other safety measures look um, flashing amber lights, hazard lights on, headlights or all the above are good. Um, approved static signs, and you can see them there on the right hand side. Um, you know, 150 meters either side of presumably the crossing point for the most part. It's going to be a bit of a hassle to use for a drive. Um, and personal holding high-vis vest to alert traffic. So key thing there is you're, you're flagging down that there's something um, different in the road environment that, that people are approaching, so they're aware of it. Um, the last one here, um, and it's only for crossings, is flashing amber lights on either side of the road. And what you've got are some amazing graphics we've pulled up here um, that show you what that might look like. Um, so the top one is potentially um, battery-operated um, <clears throat> amber lights. And because they're quite low and they probably won't be visible on either side to traffic approaching from the other side, you'd need to use four if they're kind of low like that, um, just to demarcate the crossing point and alert people the fact that they're approaching. Um, the other alternative is potentially to hook up um, some amber lights, one on either side of the, on the left hand side, if you like, of the um, approach to the crossing. Um, and both of those can be seen um, from either side because they'll be higher than the, the cattle that you're moving through. Uh, and that just kind of, um, you know, demarcates the crossing width um, and uh, enables traffic to coming up to know that there's something going on, slow down, start thinking about um, defensive driving. So those are the um, safety requirements that we have in general. Um, there are some particular circumstances where we want you to do something specific, and, and that's covered in the bylaw, but also, and, and essentially it's in this table here. Um, if you're driving on a <clears throat> state highway, um, you've got to use two measures, and we want you to use measure C as well. So just to remind you, measure C is the um, sign ind indicating stock on the back of front of pilot vehicles with flashing lights, headlights, or hazards. So the sign and some kind of flashing light system going on. So if you're working on the, driving on the state highway, please make sure you arrange for, for some pilot vehicles with um, some ability to um, alert people via lights that um, they're, they're approaching a hazard, and, and a sign of saying stock so people know what it is when they get closer. Um, just to stress, uh, droving is not allowed um, um, at night. We did mention a stock escape or, or whatever um, in certain emission situations it's allowed, but as a general rule, as a matter of business, it's not. Um, if you're crossing on a state highway during the day, you, you still have to use two measures, um, and we want you to use either D, E, or G. So D is the um, vehicles with um, flashing, flashing lights, 
Um, e is the uh, transport agency static signs. Um, and G are those amber lights that we had in the previous slide, um, uh, either side of the of the crossing. Um, if you're um, <clears throat> uh, crossing the state highway at night, um, we want you to use three measures. It's particularly hazardous. Um, it's a, our state highways are some of our busiest roads and our main freight routes. So we want you to use three measures when you're using a state crossing at night. So this, just to be clear, this is only for milking purposes. That's the only time you're permitted to cross stock at night. And we want you to use three and, um, and you have to use at least one of either the option D or G. D again is the um, vehicle with flashing amber lights. Um, and, and G is the, the amber light system that we've got going on there. Um, and um, the difference with crossing at night on a, a local road is um, you only have to use two, but we still want you to use either D or G. So these are all in the um, in the bylaw. Um, they're pretty easy once you locate your circumstances to apply them. Um, and as much as possible, we're trying to be flexible um, with what people do and what works for them. But in these particular instances, there's slightly higher risk. And so we've specified at least one measure usually that we want you to do. Um, there are some other specific requirements for stock crossings um, in the bylaw, and I thought we would just mention these. The first is, you, as much as possible, just get the stock across the road. So we don't want any dog legs or jaywalking of um, cattle. Um, you know, if you've got a stock crossing, you need to make sure you've got gates basically on either side of the road so you can move through traffic uh, your stock as, as quickly as possible from one side of your farm to the other. Um, if you put up um, fences or barriers, um, such as temporary temporary wire fences or anything like that, uh, electric fences, you need to make sure that you take them down when you finish. And you're probably thinking, well, that's a stupid thing to have to say. Well, you know, that's that's obvious. But we have at least had one instance in recent years where that was, in, in fact, not the case. And someone got very seriously injured as a consequence. A motorcyclist came through. So make sure that you take down those fences as soon as your last stock are passed and you close your gate. Get the road operating as normal as possible, as soon as possible. Um, um, I won't, you, you, your, um, <clears throat> your entrances from your farm to the road, we ask that you pack that in with hard materials such as, um, as metal basically. And, and that's basically to stop as much as possible migration of effluent and mud from the farm or um, the road margin up and through to the, into the road. Um, take all reasonable steps to prevent fouling. And, and we know this is going to happen, but when you do, like can, you can either, um, we want you to clean it up as much as practical, basically. Uh, so take a spade, take, if you've got a, um, a hose nearby, clean it up or, or use mats if you want. What you do is up to you, um, but we expect that the road environment is kept in a reasonable state. Um, I mentioned before that council will check out crossings from time to time to make sure that there is an excess effluent, effluent or mud on the road. And if there is, um, we'll ask you to do it um, and clean it up and keep an eye on it. And if you don't, then we may ask, we actually may, um, get our contractor to do it and um, charge you for the, the privilege. So if there's a few things to remember, it's these, provide um, provide for the orderly droving and crossing of stock across roads. Think about other road users and protect them as well as yourself. Um, don't try to make too much of a mess of the road. If you do, clean it up. And if you have to, you're one of those circumstances where you got to register, please get in, it's free. We'll be as helpful as we can. Um, and it helps us in the community understand what's going on in your community. Thanks very much. Um, I'll have a look at the um, the questions we've got going on. Seems to be a hell of a lot of uh, common sense there, Dwayne. Um, just just yeah. a quickie there from Eleanor, just about fencing and gates and things. Um, if there's no gate or fence and stock get in, however hard you try to keep them out, are you not responsible? Um, uh, Eleanor, could you just clarify what you mean? Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, just a little bit. You, I, I assume um, you mean get into the road, the road reserve, or is it get into yeah, get into um, paddocks alongside? I'm yeah, I'm not a handy sure on that one. Oh, well, uh, if you don't, if you don't mind, just tapping in a clarification to your question, that would be cool. Hey, so Dwayne, basically, yeah, there's a there's a shed line of common sense here, but there's also mm -hmm. other things in the bylaw. Where can people get hold? of the bylaw? I mean, is it on our website? Have we got it printed out? What's the easiest way to get hold of it just to get some details? Oh, look, uh, easiest way is Google Tasman District Council Stock Control and Driving Bylaw. Um, and it'll be the first um, thing that pops up on your search. 
if you're using Google, um, um, and, and click on that. It'll, it'll take you to our website where um, the bylaws hosted. Click on the PDF, and it's not that many pages. Um, uh, excluding all the guff, there's probably only like three or four pages of really important content in there and very easy to digest. Cool. That's excellent. Um, yeah, um, Eleanor was saying uh, she means damaged caused. So if you've tried to keep them out, they've done some damage to someone else's property. Not sure. Maybe. Oh, I see. I see. So Eleanor, I think that, yeah, yeah, I get it. I think you're, um, you're talking about if you drove and some of your stock get into their, um, into their paddocks or their farm oh, um, because they're in no gates something. or whatever yeah. and they go yep. and do some, yeah, well, um, yeah. This, the, <laughs> we're primarily concerned about um, property on the um, um, on the road margin here. Um, I, I suggest you buy your your farm, your, your follow neighbour some beer if that's the case, and and work it out amongst yourselves. Um, mm -hmm. If your stock have got in and amongst their property um, and caused damage, that's a conversation for you too. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. It's not really covered under the bylaw, is it? Hey, thanks, mm -hmm. Stephen. Yeah, that's good. So, um, if there are uh... No more questions. We'll give it a couple couple more minutes, but um, yeah, they covered it pretty comprehensively. Compre compre what's that word? You covered it well. Thanks, Dwayne. Um, so we'll hang in for for another minute or two, just just for any any more questions. But yeah, again, at our website, just um, do that old Google search as well, and it's all there in, in front of you. And um, hopefully, it makes life a, a bit easier for you if you if you're driving or you're crossing. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't sound too cumbersome at all. So. On behalf of Tasman District Council, I guess, um, Darren Palmer from the communications team, um, unless there's someone else from our team, is there's... Um, there's one question that? here. There's one question that's popped up. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, um, yep. Sorry, Nigel. G'day. Sorry, I nearly missed that. Yeah. Can you please cover the requirements for costing dairy cows over a rural road at 0500 in the morning? Again, uh, we've got five crossings that are used yeah. early in the morning. Yeah, yeah no, no worries, Nigel. We'll go back. So, um, so you're basically your circumstance is that yeah. you're crossing on a local road at night, um, and if you hopefully the screen has come back up. So, if you look at the um, right hand side of this table here, it says you must use at least two of those measures in seven point seven. So that whole list of things that you got to do, um, but you have to use either D or G as well. Um, so, what? Sorry, one of the two needs to be D or G. And just to be clear, D is a vehicle with flashing amber lights or with headlights and hazard lights on. So, so put your headlights on, put your hazard lights on, make it obvious to traffic approaching um, or have an amber light on the top of your um, side by side or farm bike or whatever. Um, you, you, or you can use um, option G. Um, so option G, I'll just go back to illustrate what that means, is this one here. Um, so option G is basically have flashing amber lights on either side of the road visible um, to both approaches to the crossing. So you can either just put some portable ones out there um, that are on the ground that are, you need four of those if you do that, or um, <clears throat> better yet, you've got an electricity supply on your fence, see if you can get something working um, so that those amber lights on poles and you switch them on when you need to. Um, the only thing I should mention about um, the pole example here, you can't have those poles on the council's road reserve, sorry, you're going to have to them on the, the fence margin, um, it creates a hazard to traffic. Does that, hopefully that covers it, Nigel? Oh, give us a call, give us give us a ring tomorrow, and yeah, more than happy to chat to you, that's all a call. Now we spent more time and energy and effort on developing the bylaw than we did on the graphics for tonight's presentation. <laughs> I'm sure you'd appreciate that. <laughs> hey, it's all good. Um, give us a yell. We're, we're around and about. Just just call us at council if you need any more info. But um, other than that, uh, I'll just scroll down. One more question. Cool. Thanks, Nigel. Great for you. Thanks for being part of the, the uh, presentation tonight. Otherwise, uh, we will see you next time. I'm sure there will be a next time. And um, thanks very much from Tasman District Council and good night.